Have you ever wanted to turn static texture images into mesmerizing morphing animations? Or maybe you've just designed a new logo and you need an animated version of it for your video. Or perhaps you're just learning how to do video mapping with a new projector you bought and you need a way to create beautiful video content that's perfectly mapped to the shape of a building, a tree or a natural rock formation. Or what about bringing a QR code to life with an animation that leads to your website? Well, in this video, we're gonna dive into TextureFlow, which is an awesome, fully open source AI animation tool that gives you extremely precise control over both shape and texture and allows for a huge variety of different creative outputs depending on how you choose to use it. Hey everyone, so it's been a really long time since I made any content on YouTube. Um, so I'm kind of curious about this one, but I've been working on a lot of new stuff recently that I just want to share with the world because I'm super curious to see what other people are able to do with the tools that we've been building. So for the people following me online, you'll probably know that I've been building an open source generative AI platform called Eden.art together with my good friend Gene Kogan and the rest of our awesome team, where we're leveraging tools like Stable Diffusion, Comfy UI, Flux, LoRa trainers, large language models to basically empower digital creatives with a full suite of creative AI tools. So we first built a really awesome website where all of these individual AI tools are available for testing. And we're now building out our beta app, which is an open source framework that allows anyone to build creative AI agents on top of all these tools. You can basically think of Eden agents as custom chat GPTs on creative steroids that are able to make all kinds of stunning artwork and animations uh, just through a conversation interface. And they're able to use things like custom visual LoRa models that you can train on your own artwork or brand assets, and then also have the ability to deploy these creative agents to social media platforms like Discord, Telegram, or Twitter. So I'm gonna talk all about Eden in future videos, but since I haven't made a video here in a while, I wanted to make my life easy and start simple. So here, I'm just gonna cover one specific tool that I personally built and really enjoy called TextureFlow. So let's dive in. So the main principle behind TextureFlow is that you can take any image and use it to drive the visual content of an animation. And for the Stable Diffusion nerds out here, under the hood, this is obviously using a bunch of IP adapter models on top of the Animate Diff video model. And yes, this entire tool was built using ComfyUI. The workflow is open source. All the links are in the description. So there's basically two ways to use TextureFlow right now. The easiest is to just go to eden.art, log in, go to the TextureFlow tool, and you're ready to start experimenting. But if you have your own GPU and you know how to run Comfy UI, then you can just run TextureFlow on your own computer for free. All the links to do that are in the description. So I guess the most prominent feature of TextureFlow is that I really built it so that there is no prompting required at all. So this entire flow runs off image inputs alone. So there's no secret prompt engineering tricks to know. This is all pixels in, pixels out. In fact, the very first version of TextureFlow was heavily inspired by the content smashing workflow by Purs, who I think was among the first to have the pixels be entirely driven by IP adapter masks. So here's a huge shout out to him for creating awesome Comfy UI content and contributing to this ecosystem of open source AI builders. So to show you what this looks like on Eden, you can just go to TextureFlow, drop in a style image, hit create, and out comes a morphing animation based on the style image you put in. Super easy. Now, obviously TextureFlow lets you input multiple style images, which will all get injected into the animation. So I could, for example, upload three images here and then get an animated version back that pulls all of those into a single smooth animation. Very nice. Now, on Eden, if you go to settings, you'll see there's a bunch of different mapping modes you can choose from, which then determine how these style images get mapped into the final animation. 
Here's a couple of examples that show how the different motion modes affect the video content that's produced. So basically, the mapping mode determines this motion mask at the top, which then determines how the style images that you input are mapped into the final animation. There's a bunch of options available through the interface, but we'll see in a moment when we dive in the workflow that you can actually use any motion input you want, making this stuff like really powerful for advanced animation design if you want to. Now, one thing you'll notice when using texture flow is that the animations will never fully reproduce style images that you put in exactly. So the images are not really like keyframes, they're more like artistic content drivers and the animation will often sort of drift away a little bit from the images that you put in, but that's actually entirely by design because this allows for what's probably, I think, the most powerful feature of texture flow, which is shape control. So imagine that I have a great logo, let's say our own Eden logo, and I wanna inject that into a texture flow animation and really make it come alive. Well, so for this, I can open the settings in texture flow and there's this option here to add a shape input. Here, I can either draw my own shape or I can upload either an image or a video to use as a shape guide for the animation and then adjust this slider here to modify how strongly that shape should be visible in the output animation. And this is where things get really interesting because now I have full independent control over the textures and the shape of the animation, which is something that really no other AI video tools are particularly good at. So with the Eden logo uploaded, I can simply drop in a couple of great style images and voila, we have this sick animation featuring our logo that seamlessly cycles through all these awesome textures. Pretty cool, right? And obviously you can use a lot more subtle texture images and maybe crank up the control net strength if you want something that's a little bit more subtle. Now to give you another example of how else this can be used, let's make an animated QR code. So there's this shape guidance type toggle here, which lets you switch between different control net models inside of texture flow, which all have a kind of subtly different way of using the shape that you put in. For example, there's this luminance control net, which will apply guidance based on the dark and bright regions in the shape input, which is ideal for things like a QR code. So now I can take any QR pattern and transform it into this awesome animated version that you can still scan with your phone. Pretty awesome, right? There's a bunch of good visual examples on the internet of what these different control net models focus on, which I'll link in the description, um, but generally it can take a little bit of experimentation to find good settings. This is why Texture Flow also has this activate upscale toggle, which lets you run a quick test of your settings before running a slower, more expensive full HD animation. So with an image shape input, you can create things like logo animations, animated QR codes, or just inject any shape really you want into the animations while still having full control over the texture, which is super powerful already. But things get even more interesting when we use a video or GIF as the shape input, which is also fully supported in texture flow. So here, let's for example, use this nice animated GIF, drop it into the shape input, and then add some nice textures images here, and boom, look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? Now I'll say upfront that it usually takes a bit of experimentation to find the right combination of shape input, style images, control type, strength settings, all of that stuff, which is why I recommend people to experiment with the upscale toggle turned off until you find the sweet spot that really makes your animation work and then you go for the slower full quality animation run. And honestly, once you start playing with video inputs, putting well curated style images as textures and messing with the settings, you can really start to make some super beautiful stuff. The space of possibilities here is just really endless, which is why I'm so excited to release this tool publicly and see what you can all start making with it. Cause I'm 100% sure people are gonna make really, really dope stuff with texture flow that I would have never come up with. 
Um, if you make something awesome and you want to share it, please tag Eden on socials so we can reshare your art and we can have a sense of what people are doing uh, with texture flow. I'm kind of excited to see all the cool stuff. All right, if you've made it this far in the video, I guess your creative juices are really triggered. So I guess it's time to start sharing some real secret sauce. So let me talk about a few somewhat more advanced options. So the first one here is this AI strength slider, which is basically how much denoising is done on top of the shape input. Typically you keep this at one, um, but for some inputs, it can actually help to tune this down slightly to like 0 0.8, 0 0.9. So a little bit of the input shape is preserved in the animation. This will typically adopt like rough colors and shapes, but it will ignore small details. It's like the AI model is squinting and looking at a very blurry version of your shape input when it starts generating the final animation. Then there's this fit strategy, which basically controls how your shape gets mapped to the selected output aspect ratio. So there's stretch, Kind of obvious then there's fill or crop and then there's pad and i guess these are all visually clear by just looking at the examples then there's another trick i want to show which is the input resolution so essentially when you activate the upscale toggle the output animation will always be hd regardless of the resolution settings that you're using here however by increasing the initial rendering resolution you can add more patterns to the animation. So here you can see two animations with the same style images and the same shape input, but a low initial resolution on the first one and a higher resolution on the second one. And you can kind of see how this affects the perceived entropy of the animation. So if you start with low resolutions, your patterns and your animations are typically a lot more elegant and simple. And if you wanna make it more dense and add more patterns and more entropy, you can try to increase uh, the initial rendering resolution a bit. Then there's a few final sliders you can play with. So generation steps controls how much processing is used to produce the animation. Increasing this will take a long time to render, but it can sometimes produce slightly better results. So I recommend to experiment with low settings of like, you know, five to eight, and then dialing this up when you're going for your final full HD version. The motion strength is pretty self-explanatory. It simply controls how strong the animated motion is in the output video. So for some animations, you want everything to be like super smooth and steady, where for other stuff, it's kind of nice to have a little bit more chaos and entropy. So just play around with this. And then there's the boundary softness, which determines how sharp or how blurry the transition is in the masking video between the neighboring style image regions. So this basically affects how sharp or how gradual the texture transitions are in the final animation. If people are interested in just looking at some good settings and some examples, um, I've curated a collection on Eden with a whole bunch of texture flow renders that are all made on Eden, which I'll link in the description. You can just go through each one of them. If you find something you'd like, you can just click use as preset and then that will take you to the creation form with all of the settings filled in that were used to make that exact animation. So this is kind of a nice way to explore some settings and to get a feel for how things work. On top of that, I've also created a VJ expert agent on Eden that you can just talk to and it will basically guide you through the entire process of creating good texture flow animations using just natural language, which can actually be kind of the easiest way to get started until you start understanding the tool well enough that you want to start dialing all of the settings manually. So if you want to go for a quick thing, just use the VJ expert agent. If, you're, if you know what you're doing, you can just use the tool directly. Now, by now, I think you may have noticed that texture flow is kind of amazing at making these abstract, artistic, morphing patterns, but it's definitely not the best tool for making narrative videos where you say, want to make a character walk. For this, we have a ton of other tools on the website that you can explore, but texture flow definitely isn't good for telling a very specific story. Just something to keep in mind. All right, if you've made it this far, I congratulate the integrity of your attention span and your dedication to creative AI tools. 
Um, if you make something awesome and you want to share it, please tag Eden on socials so we can reshare your art and we can have a sense of what people are doing uh, with texture flow. I'm kind of excited to see all the cool stuff. Just to give one example, last weekend I did visuals for a live guitar performance by a friend of mine using all texture flow animations. And I have to say the result was just amazing. We just got so much positive feedback. People were super impressed and we just had a really good time.